I'm on the old uh, to be released photo. I was looking at it right now. I was like, oh wait, what? I forgot that I used the to be released scene to actually record for Go Things because this is where I keep my website tracker thing on. <laughs> <laughs> so I always see it every single time. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey, and I'm here with Zenron. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm so glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen watch every single anime released by Shonen Jump and also, I guess, live action stuff, which we will get into eventually. Because uh, there's also plenty of that, funny enough. And we plan to do this until the end of time itself, or until the end of one of us, whichever one may happen first. Place your bets now as to which one of us will <laughs> fall. <laughs> It's my favorite part of the intro. <laughs> Theater <laughs> style uh, anime reviewing. Exactly. I feel like not enough anime reviewers talk about their mortality <laughs> in videos. <laughs> that's what. I, that's what I feel like the special thing that we bring into this. So yes, we're we're showing our guide and we're starting with Gintama. That's the series that we've been going through all the way, and the series that we also switch off um, every other week is currently Kuroko and Jujutsu Kaisen. So Zen, today we're here to talk about Gintama episodes one hundred and one to one hundred and five, which is also called the Shinsengumi Crisis Arc. Are you ready for it? I am. 100%. I'm ready for the Shinsengumi to be in crisis. I'm ready. Me too. Let's start with the ultimate crisis. Episode 101. Rules are made to be broken. So, uh, the Shinsengumi are kind of standing around talking about, like, they got cool new swords and Hiji, or not Hijikata, uh, what's his name? Yamazaki is like, look at mine. I have a brand name sword. And they're like, wow, that's really cool. Okita shows up and he's like, yeah, mine's even cooler. It's got, like, a built in music player and shit in it. Um, and then Kondo, I think, has an even like nicer one that's like an even better uh, brand name sword until Okita breaks it because he's mad. Yeah, uh, mad at how good the sword is. Yeah. So Hijikata is like uh, walking around and he's like, oh, you know, I need a. I, I don't give a shit about all the romantic stuff about swords. I just need a weapon. Um,. He's got a big chip in his sword, and he asks this blacksmith to fix it for him, and he's he wants to borrow a sword on the wall to replace his until it's done. And the old man is like, uh, you can't have that sword, it's cursed. Sit down and listen to my tale. And the very next scene is him walking away saying, I did not listen to his tale, because <laughs> old men talk for a very long time. Um, he's right. He's like, oh, the sword's cursed or whatever, and he gets surrounded by a bunch of terrorists. So he's like, all right, let me try out this fancy cursed sword. Um, and then all of a sudden, he's on his seat, he's on his knees, begging for his life, like, please don't kill me. Uh, he doesn't know what's going on. And then another guy from the Shinsengumi named Ito arrives and saves him. Um, they're back at the Shinsengumi Hall, like, celebrating Ito's return. Um, everyone seems happy that he's back, except for Hijikata, for the most part. Um, Ito's talking about, like, oh, you know, I, I did all this stuff to get us more funding and everything. He's, like, the big... Everyone's praising him and stuff for being so great. Um, he's the only one in the Shinsengumi who can handle the political aspect of the job. Yeah, he's, like, a he's a politician kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Um, he's very smart and he's very strong. Um... So Kondo usually kind of just lets him do his thing because he doesn't know what he's doing because he's kind of a fucking idiot. Um, yeah. Him and Hijikata walk past each other at night and they have like this little moment where they both swear they're going to kill the other one. Um, Kondo's talking to Hijikata and Hijikata's like, dude, this guy is bad news. He's amassing like allies. He's trying to gain influence. He wants power. I think he's probably coming for your job. Kondo's like, nah, he's chill. It's all good. <laughs> um, Hijikata then has another freak out where he starts watching, uh, like a mad, like a Sailor Moon parody. It's like a samurai Sailor Moon parody. Yeah, with um, um uh, Tomoe, the ancient lady, um, swordsman. Yeah, she was the lady swordsman who died for 
uh, died on the battlefield. One of the very few female samurais of back then. The only reason I know this is because she's Chie's original persona in Persona 4. <laughs> That's, oh, okay. Protect me, Tomoe. <laughs> That's how I know most of my ancient Japanese <laughs> mythological <laughs> figures. Um, he's embarrassed because Okita saw everything. And then um, a bunch of Shinsengumi dudes are like reading Shonen Jump because Shonen Jump is banned in the Shinsengumi headquarters because Hijikata prefers the other manga, <laughs> a competitor magazine. Um and then he pulls out, he takes the jump from them, and he's like, wow, Two Love Rue is really good. And they're all like, oh my god. <laughs> it's the ultimate he's sign that something's wrong. <laughs> praising Two Love Rue, what the hell? Um, then they're in a meeting, and someone's phone goes off. And he's like, please, my wife is in labor, don't kill me for my cell phone being on. And then Hijikata's goes off, and it's playing, I think, the theme song to that um, Pretty show cure. that he was watching earlier. No, it's actually funny, it's, some, it's something called Pretty Cure, which is a... Uh... A magical girl show <laughs> oh <laughs> um and he answers it and he's like oh cool there's like a a limited edition doll with the dvd set um then they're doing this interrogation and they're like yeah Hijikata, you're gonna interrogate this guy and get all of his secrets and then they peek inside and they're having like a like a slumber party together and Hijikata's <laughs> like hey I told you who I like you gotta tell me who you like and the terrorist is like no <laughs> um, eventually Hijikata tells Okita about the sword and he's like look man and Okita doesn't believe him um, and he feels like he's either his personality is switched with someone else or the sword is like amplifying his shitty behavior like his weakness um Okita's like, so why don't you just get rid of it? And then Hijikata's like, I, I can't. I'm trying, but I can't. He's even like using it to stir his drink. Yeah, which is my favorite um, part, is that he's stirring yeah. it very <laughs> casually. With the, yeah, with the sword. Um, and then Okita's like, hey, you know, Ito's trying to take your job or whatever. And Hijikata's like, I don't fucking care. I violated all my, all the rules, so he might tell me to kill myself. With, he might tell me to stab myself with my sword or whatever. Um, and he's like, all right, so, you know, be careful. Don't hang out with me because Ito will try to get you. And then Okita stops him, but then he only stops him to tell him to go buy some, uh, like a, a soba sandwich and a jump. There's a mandatory meeting going on and Hijikata's not there. So Ito's like, aha, we need to discipline Hijikata so that people don't start acting out. Um, and then Hijikata busts into the room and he gives Okita the sandwich and the jump. And then, uh, he realizes it's a trick because both Ito and Okita make this face at him like, aha, gotcha. And he realizes they trapped him to try to get him in trouble. That's where the episode ends. Man. So, to get over some of the... It's funny because uh, where this arc goes, I almost completely forgot. Like, oh yeah, this was the start of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, where this arc eventually goes and where it starts are like two completely different... <laughs> beings almost um i liked a lot of the historical references to like i think uh okita's sword is also like his fancy new sword is also like a fancier version of the the sword the actual okita had and same thing goes for kondo's um i also really like that kondo's sword even after it, it breaks he still uses it as a lint roller and you see it like in, when, uh-huh. he's, <laughs> when he's talking to hijikata he's telling him like ah oh, don't don't worry about ito so much he's still using it <laughs> to, to pick up any of the lint that's around um i really like the introduction to ito as well um to show that he's basically the exact opposite of hijikata um and hit in the way that Hijikata's is all about like pure battle and all about like the actual getting shit done half of the shinsen gobi while he's the one who's actually trying to go out there and make the deals that actually make that possible and it shows exactly why the two cannot get along at all because they're literally from two different there are two sides of a similar coin that you probably need both to function but both sides would absolutely hate each other <laughs> and it shows here um and yeah, in general, I like the slow buildup of the cursed object too. Because when he first does the sword thing and he's getting ready to fight, he does like this. Whenever he goes into basically his coward stance, he has like a real. His voice changes in such a funny way that it doesn't even sound like Hijikata sometimes, where he's just like, 
oh yeah like uh, d- please don't hurt me here you go i have three thousand yen on me <laughs> please take that and i have like a bus credit or something uh the other thing that was yeah, he his... says uh please take my three thousand yen but please don't take my subway card because then i can't get home <laughs> i can't get on the subway <laughs> Yeah, and then he gets chastised by the anti-foreigner people by saying, like, what kind of grown man only has 3,000 yen on him? Uh, yeah, I like that. I also like Ito's introduction as well as being there to save him. And yeah, that at the end bit where uh, Okita kind of, like, screws him over, which is really funny because it's like, oh, yeah, if there was... it. it if there was any sign here that Okita really doesn't have any allegiance to anyone other than just straight up Kondo, it's probably that scene. <laughs> Cause he really does mm-hmm. just throw him down the river very easily. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and also like the, a lot of the stuff that kind of gets brought up later, like the rules that Hijikata starts, like, cause he's the one who made all the rules of the Shinsengumi and he's enforcing them. And he has like some ones that really make sense. Like, Oh, make sure to stand up for yourself or something like that. And then he has other ones that are really weird. Like you said, like the jump one, like don't read Shonen Jump, <laughs> read instead. Uh, yeah. It's magazine. the only magazine you can read in, in Shonen Jump or in uh Shinsengumi headquarters is a uh, magazine. magazine. You can't read jump. No jump, just magazine, which is really funny. And again, the the best way to show that he's going down a wrong path is to show that he's getting really into to love room. <laughs> Which is, I yeah. think, my my favorite aspect of it. No offense to anyone who's a Two Love Roo fan. I think I honestly would love Two Love Roo if I actually watched it. But it's maybe the most opposite thing that you could imagine. Like, the ultimate sign of someone's going down a depraved sign is that they're getting really into To Love Roo. And it also really sets up the one of my favorite jokes in the next one. <laughs> in the next episode is his obsession continues on from that point. But yeah, um, really good setup. It starts with a very, like silly setup but i think a lot of the stuff that they set up here ends up making a lot of sense of stuff goes on including the way that uh kondo kind of handles being the shinsen gumi leader which is that he doesn't really he's not actually a very good leader but he's someone that everyone in the shinsen gumi kind of gravitate towards regardless but he's also not very good at being the actual leader and he also knows that he's not very good at being the leader but regardless of anything, people want him to actually lead, so he leads regardless. But it was good to see him start there and have his, have his like mindset here, because we actually don't ever, we rarely ever see anything of Kondo actually legitimately doing his job. I think we've only seen like two to three times in the hundred something episodes <laughs> that we've watched. Yeah, he does. He does like nothing with the Shinsengumi other than uh, Hijikata and Okita. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool to see that. And yeah, I thought it was a good start for it. What do you think? Yeah, it was good. Um, it's obvious, like, the arc... I was not expecting it to go the way that it went after these episodes. Yeah, um, it, it goes a I, place. I definitely brushed it off as just, like, a silly thing uh, in this one. I thought it was funny, but, you know, I didn't think too hard about, like, the implications of it until later on when it actually started getting serious. Hmm. Which is a good way of just kind of like being very, it it really just kind of creeps up on you what this is actually about, which is <laughs> pretty fun, uh, way of kind of introducing an arc, you know. It feels very in the Gintama it's style. It's definitely something that would not work if it wasn't Gintama. That's for sure. I agree. It definitely feels like something that is of Gintama flavor, and anyone else that can try and do it, it would be very easy to just kind of mess up and not do correctly. But I feel like they did a good job in the introduction of it. And now, speaking of the introduction, let's go into the next one, episode 102, Otaku are talkative. Which is, I think, true. I mean, we're pretty talkative. We have an entire hour. Yeah. That's <laughs> we, true. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh... The episode starts with like a TV show that Kintoki and um, Kagura. Kagura are watching, and apparently they're supposed to like tape it because uh, Shinpachi's gonna be on it. And it's about like otaku dudes who refuse to go get jobs. They're just like lazy layabouts or whatever. The neats. Uh, the neats, yeah. Um, and Shinpachi's all offended. He's like, "That's not true. You know, not every otaku is a neat." Some of us do just fine in society. And somehow <laughs> it breaks down into like a brawl because um, it's like anime lovers versus 
uh, idol lovers because they're like, oh, you like 2D girls. Well, 3D girls are stupid or whatever. And so they start like fist fighting. Yeah, it starts with maybe my favorite uh, question ever of the ultimate breakdown of this, which uh, Hijikata brings up, which is that the idol fans are in denial that they are <laughs> that they can get a pop idol themselves if they are fans of pop idols. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, that's not true. You know, ours is real. We could totally end up with someone. And then Hijikata goes like, but you know you can't, right? <laughs> you know that for a fact that you can't. And so the delusion is, is that your delusion is as strong as ours. The only difference is that yours are real. <laughs> Which I thought was a good back and forth <laughs> fight, which is very true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Hmm. Uh, we find out that Hijikata is on an indefinite suspension. Um, Ito tried to get him killed, but Kondo said no. Um, so people are like, oh, Ito's never going to let him come back, and then he's going to take his job or whatever. Um, he has a talk with Okita. And Okita's like, I want the job, and Ito's like, okay, you can have it, I'll give it to you. And there's another one of the trader guys who's like, why would you do that um, if you're the one who wants the job? And then Ito's like, oh, that, that job's beneath me, I'm looking for more. I'm like, you know, I'm a, I'm genius, and I'm a prodigy, and no one ever gets me in my ambition and all this shit. He's just talking mess about, like, how he's the best. Um... Yamazaki is eavesdropping, and he goes to try to escape to tell Hijikata, but he gets noticed by Ito, and he's running away. Um, he's got a cut on his arm because they tried to stop him. Then he ends up uh, getting attacked by Banzai of the Kiheitai, who is there to, like... They're, they're teaming up with Ito to, to do a coup on the Shinsengumi and get Kondo killed so that Ito can take over. Um... Yamazaki gets stabbed by Banzai and he tries crawling away. Ito tells Banzai to finish him off while he leaves and reports uh, the death of Yamazaki. Banzai decides to like go after him and he picks the sword up and it kind of cuts away as we see him swing. Um, and then we're told later on that Yamazaki is dead. Um, they're at the odd jobs place because Toshi has come up with the odd jobs guys uh, they're, he's kind of like acting weird acting all otaku-ish and they're all like who the fuck what the fuck's going on they have no idea what's happening um, they t he tells them a little bit about the demon sword so they end up taking him to I think the um, the, the, the girl who from the Benny Zakura arc right yeah yeah no they take it to her yeah the girl who made the sword that, he, that Kentucky uses in that um, and she's like, oh yeah, this is the, this is a soul, this is a demon sword, it's possessed by a vengeful soul, um, it's a parody of the Muramasa, I think it's called the Muramasha. It is called the Muramasha. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, she's like, yeah, it, it's got the soul of a dead otaku in it, because his mother was tired of him being, uh, an otaku, so she killed him with a sword. And now his vengeful spirit is inside the sword, so it's uh, it's slowly consuming uh, Hijikata's soul. Um, and she's like, yeah, I don't think there's anything left of him in there, honestly. Uh, they turn around and they see that he's lit a cigarette one last time, and he's like, I don't, I don't have much strength left in me to resist this curse, so I'm begging you to please protect the Shinsengumi for me. Um... They're walking through the streets, and the Shinsengumi show up, and they're like, oh, Yamazaki's dead, we, we need you to come back quickly. Um, and they're trying to pull him into the car and telling him to return. He's resisting, and the more he resists, they end up pulling their swords. Um, Gintoki notices and grabs Hichikata, and they start to run, because the Shinsengumi were trying to get rid of him to kill him. Um, they drive a car down the alleyway to try to run them over, and Kagura catches it. And picks it up. Yeah, um, reminding everyone that, oh yeah, she is super stupid uh -huh. strong. Yeah, she's crazy strong. Uh, they end up stealing the car and trying to make a getaway. Um, someone who's working with Ito accidentally reveals over the radio what the plan is. So now Kentoki and company know what it is. Uh, we realize that Kondo is on a train where he's completely surrounded by traitors and they're going to assassinate him. Um, they kind of have this conversation and he says that like 
oh, you know, it's true that you might have these guys on your side, but my people would never be controlled by somebody like you. They, they won't be controlled by anyone. Um, and that's when Okita walks in, and this because the uh, Ito still thinks Okita's on his side. He's very much not, and he's at, he's like clearly turning on him at this point. And one guy grabs his shoulder and tells him like, "Don't you fucking talk to Ito like that. Apologize." And uh, Okita immediately kills him, um, and he demands that they release Kondo. And it ends with a standoff of Okita versus all of the traitors who have captured Kondo. Yes. Also the. Absolutely, the start. He gets. He's much more terrifying in the next episode, but this is the start of the Okita actually being serious. <laughs> of the why he's the the strongest swordsman of the Shinsengumi because he is fucking terrifying <laughs> in the way he fucks up dudes in the in this uh, in this arc. Um, yes, he goes nuts. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, things are like there was so many good things. First of all, I love when. Uh, that opening bit there where they're talking about 2D versus 3D, it's very funny. Like, just the idea of, like, Shin- Shinpachi being so incensed, saying, like, don't put us in the same category as them. I ha- I can have a functioning job. Uh, I actually, you know, our, our obsession, our women are real, you know? We're not the same. And just to get completely debunked because it's under the idea, he gets completely destroyed by the idea of, like, so you believe that you actually have a chance with the idols that you, uh, worship. And he's like, uh, and yeah, and then it (laughs) boils down to him going like, you're just as delusional as us. (laughs) Which is really funny. Um, I really liked it when he's in the office and he's talking about like, oh yeah, I don't really have a job. I got suspended. I'm really, I'm really getting into writing some to love Rue Dojinshi. And he shows, like, I think I'm going to go to Comic Cat. And he shows his, like, amateur art for To Love Rune. It's the fucking, it's like a badly drawn cover of the first volume. Yeah, it's like a terrible crayon drawing. Oh, it's so good, though. <laughs> I would buy the shit out of this. And then I like, because, too, he doesn't just say, like, oh, I'm going to go to this convention, I think, with my thing. He, he goes to Gintoki, and he's like, hey, you know a lot about uh, manga, right? Do you want to make some money with me if we go and make a good <laughs> manga? And Gintoki gets all pissed off. Yeah, he does. Absolutely pissed off. He also does a really funny bit with um, Kagura where he says, like, you look, you kind of remind me of, I think it was like a, it was like a specific character from, uh, that wears a Chinese dress. Would you mind if I take a picture? And then he starts doing, like, the things that they do at cosplay events where the dude takes a whole bunch of pictures. And she gets super- Oh, yeah, like a million pictures of her. (laughs) Yeah, she gets super bashful. (laughs) Like, she's, she's, her eyes turn all big like an anime (laughs) eye. Yeah, and then uh, I think it pisses off Gintoki and Shinpachi also that he's doing it. Yeah, and they're also pissed off at her for um, acting the way that she is because she's blushing for whatever reason. Magical Chinese girl papaya is what he calls her, I think. Um, I also like that he said like the brawl was okay because his figure was perfectly fine, which is yeah, then shows his figure didn't break. The Tomoe Five Thousand, um, <laughs> which looks a lot like Sailor Moon and if it just had bigger boobs. <laughs> Uh, I also like eventually all the otaku, the otaku stuff is really funny to me. Like when he mentions later, like I need a, he when he wants to hire them for a job because there's they're buying the figures, the new figure that's coming out, but it's uh, limited to one person to buy it. So he's like, I need three, I need one for collection, one for display, and one for personal use. And so it'd be really neat if you guys could come with me. And then they start attacking him. He's like, What do you mean by personal use? <laughs> You're disgusting. We hate you. Oh, uh, it was really. Oh, yeah. He's like one, one to use, one to preserve, and one to look at. Yeah, they they attack him. It's like what, what? That's gr- fucking gross. Get out of here. Uh, which is really funny. And I like the bit where Kondo starts talking about um the difference between him and Ito because Ito says like he compares Kondo to a white flag which allows anyone with any color to kind of join up with him and feel like they're contributing to the flag where he's a black flag, where no matter what he touches, it turns black. And Kondo corrects him by saying, like, I don't really attract colors. What I attract is filth. And the filth is... (laughs) There's a lot of filthy, dirty, useless people that come near me. 
but each one of them, when you get together, you make something strong. There are nothing but stains, basically. And that's what he considers the Shinsengumi. It's not that he's anything that's, like, showing a colorful things. They're all just a bunch of, like, rejects and idiots, but they're his idiots that stick together. They're like a group of idiots, <laughs> lovely idiots. And uh, I liked his little speech there, because it... Um, he kind of puts it on a way, because like, in a way you could see him as someone like that, where it's like, um, uh, a flag that anyone can kind of go with and be super strong and consider that anyone that can support it. But Kondo doesn't see himself that way, because that would be, the white flag analogy only works if Kondo was competent at his job, but he's not. <laughs> so what ends up being is that he attracts people who are incompetent, but because he's so trusting and loving... Um, and wants to genuinely be friends with a whole bunch of people, they stick with him, like like the dirt that he says, and it can't be washed off. Uh, and it's funny, because I think he also calls himself, like, I'm a loincloth, I may not be white, but there's hairs next to a loincloth. Yeah, he calls himself a fuzzy loincloth. Yeah, exactly. So I, I really liked him for saying that. It's a very <laughs> deep look inside of himself and saying, like, nah, man, I'm trash and I, I attract trash, but damn it, it's my trash. And yeah, I like the end bit with Okita because I knew for a second, like, when in the beginning of this episode when he mentions um, killing uh, Kondo or assassinating Kondo, I was like, oh, he didn't tell that part to Okita. Because if Okita knew that, he would have killed him on the spot <laughs> instantly. <laughs> if he knew yeah, that was... The only person that Okita gives a shit about. Yes. Uh, I've, I've said that he, he absolutely hates Ijikata, so he would gladly find a way to get him out, out of the group because he showed weakness for a brief bit. But if there's anything that he loves more than he hates Ijikata, it's Kondo. And it really shows here because he goes out of his way to really protect him. And yeah, I also like the bit where um, bon Bonsai comes back bonsai yeah bonsai comes back because at this point i realized oh that's why they were playing that theme throughout it all they had been playing the um tatsugiri theme throughout the entirety of the episode i was like i i, I took it as like oh i guess it's just the theme they use for like serious moments but i was like oh no that actually means that they're involved in some way it, it hit me like when stone cold music hit <laughs> that was the <laughs> When they revealed, like, who stabbed uh, Yamazaki, and then the music played, and it was like, Oh my god, by god, it's them! <laughs> it's the Kieta, my oh, god. Oh my god. And it instantly elevated what I had been watching. <laughs> instantly when I knew they were involved. I also really liked how they uh, took out Yamazaki as well. Because they fuck him up with that uh, sword straight through the... Not through the gut, but they hit him in a pretty vital piece so yeah really like this episode as well how'd you feel about it zen uh yeah it's really good uh it it was this is the point where i was like oh my god we're actually gonna have like serious shits going on um because yamazaki's dead and they're like trying to do like an actual coup and this is all based around hijikata's obsessive love of girly anime <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> ridiculous um, I really like the scene where Kagura catches the car. I really like how, uh, when Hijikata's in nerdy mode, he calls everyone, like, respectful names. He calls <laughs> Gintoki, like, Mr. Sakata, <laughs> and he calls Kagura <laughs> Miss Kagura and everything. Yes, that's um, good. And then, of course, I like the last request bit where he's like, you know, this is all I've got left, so please protect the Shinsengumi for me because I can't, I can't do anything anymore. Um... And Gintoki, he does that shit he always does, where he's like, "Let's just not deal with it. This is not our problem." And then where everyone's like, "You're gonna, you're gonna do it." Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. you do this every time. Yes. Oh, also a good bit when he, when she, when uh, Kagura stops the patrol car, he calls her the return of a rally from Doctor Slump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love the part where he, yeah, he keeps. I completely forgot about it, and now that I remembered, it's amazing. Um, he keeps making anime references because Gintoki is dragging him. This interaction is my favorite part of the episode. Gintoki is dragging him to escape the assassination attempt. And he's like, ah, please, the the, the shoulders of my denim jacket are going to cut my arms off like guts from Berserk. 
And he's like, oh my god, shut up. <laughs> and then Kagura catches the car and he goes, oh my god, you're just like uh, Aurelia from Dr. Slum. <laughs> and he goes, well, sh- somebody please shut this guy up. <laughs> when they jump in and they start filing, he's getting so pissed off at all the anime references. Yes, very a very good bit here. They really do a good job of making him the most annoying character. And all he's really doing is just referencing anime. <laughs> But yeah, really good bit. Really starts lets you know, like you said, this is the start where you're like, oh shit! It's like the the idea of like, oh yeah, the slump, the slump stance versus the standing up straight slant stance. Mm-hmm. That's what it was like the second that uh, music hit, and I saw I was like, oh, th- these dudes are involved. Okay, real shit has just started. <laughs> and talking about real shit, let's talk about episode one hundred three. There's a thin line between strength and weakness. So we pick up exactly where we left off with Okita in the stare down with Ito and his crew who has got Kondo captive. Um, Ito's like, oh, you you were on Hijikata's side the whole time. Oh my god. And Okita's like, no, I'm on Kondo's side and that's it. And I want to be the one that's by his side, not Hijikata. And so if I have to kill anyone else, I'll do it. It doesn't matter. Um... Ito's like, oh, it's fine that we used each other and we can now, you know, be done with one another. Um, some of his men try to attack Okita, and then he flips a switch, which triggers a bomb. Um, Kondo and Okita escape together while the Odd Jobs crew and Hijikata are driving that stolen cop car to try to get to where um, Kondo is. They keep trying to get Hijikata back up, and so Gintoki uh, pretends to be him over the radio uh, to alert everyone to the plan. Um, Hijikata's like, I can't, I can't do it, because I'm, you know, I'm not, not strong anymore, I'm all scared, I don't want to do it. Gintoki um, jumps to the back of the car, and I think he makes Kagura drive the car while he's doing this, which is funny. Um, he jumps to the back of the car and starts yelling at him, and the original Hijikata comes out uh, for a minute, and like smashes him into the a part of the car because he keeps getting berated by him. Um, Ito tells them to not let Kondo and Okita escape and not to stop the train because originally they were going to stop the train because it's fucking on fire now. Um, Kondo and Okita are like hiding out in a car, and Okita ends up locking him in the car and tells him that he's going to go back and fight uh, because as long as Kondo is still alive, they haven't lost yet. Um, he splits the train car so that Kondo's part of the train will keep going, and Okita's side is going to slow down over time, and they'll get further apart. Um, Okita walks in, and there's like a whole army of jeeps from the Kiheitai there to help, and he's like, ah, you thought you could save him, but I'm not here alone doing this. Um, And then... (laughs) Okita says, oh, I'm also not alone. And then a cop car busts out. It's the stolen cop car with the Odd Jobs crew and Hijikata, and they're all wearing Shinsengumi uniforms for some reason. <laughs> um, Ito is freaked out because he's like, oh my god, Hijikata's back. But uh, it's actually the scared Hijikata still, and Gintoki's like, can you not be cool for ten seconds, please? <laughs> he's like hitting him with a rocket launcher, and he's like, did you really only t- turn back? into your cool mode just to hit me. <laughs> uh, Okita gives him another thing about like, oh, you know, you broke one of the Shinsengumi rules, which is illegally aiding the enemy, and so I'm going to have to kill you all. Um, Ito jumps out and jumps onto Banzai's motorcycle to go chase down the portion of the train that Kondo is still on. Uh, Okita has a stand down with the men, and he tells them like, you know, as the captain of the first squad, I'll give you one final lesson, and he gives them this speech about, like, when the enemy in front of you is much stronger than you could ever hope to be, overwhelm him with numbers, focus your spirit, and attack with everything you have, and then and then in between where he says, and then, and then he, like, he stops talking for a minute, kills them all, and then says, die. So the last bit of his advice was, and then, die. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, he kills every single one of the people in the car. Uh, the jeeps from the Kiheitai are shooting at our our boys, the Odd Jobs team. Um, they end up catching up to the train, and he tries to kick uh, Toshiro out of the car. 
Um, he's like grabbing onto the door, and he makes another anime reference here, and I don't remember what it was, but it was really funny. He's like, uh, oh my god, what is this? Oh, he says, making me go out and fight alone here would be as useless as sending Yamcha to Namek to decide the fate of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was real for that. Yeah, and then Gintoki goes, no, that's okay, you're more of a Vegeta, you've got this. <laughs> Which is funny because, one, that's like the character archetype that Hijikata fills. And two, Vegeta also fucking dies on Namek. <laughs> Uh, very good reference yes also it's funny because if you read you know when crunchyroll puts up the little like explaining the references for you things mm -hmm. the reference the one for yamcha is like yamcha is a character from dragon ball and he's one of the weaker characters and the vegeta one is uh vegeta is another character from dragon ball he is one of the stronger characters <laughs> I not inaccurate he's one of the stronger ones that also loses yeah. a whole bunch he just loses a lot yeah um, they eventually catch up to um, the the main car because they end up pulling Hichikata back into their car. Um, Kondo's crying because he sees Hichikata is still here to help him even after he treated him so badly and punished him and everything. Um, Gintoki shoots a rocket launcher at the car that Kondo is in <laughs> to blow it open. In the um, middle of his sad, he was about to give a sad speech, and he gets fucking yeah, blown I, away. Yeah, Toki explodes it. Um, and he's like, why, you almost fucking killed me, like, what are you doing, dude? And they're like, no, it's fine, listen, I seriously need you to give me money. Because earlier on, he's trying to get the Shinsengumi to pay him for helping Hijikata, and they ignore him completely. So he's like, no, Kondo, really, I need you to give me money. And Kondo's like, listen, I'll give you all the money I have if you take, uh... Hichikata out of here and let me die for this because this is all my fault, etc. Um, Gintoki explains the curse to him. Um, and he's like, yeah, he's he's been cursed and he can't do anything about it. And that makes Kondo feel even worse because he didn't he didn't help Hichikata when he needed him, but Hichikata's been trying to help the Shinsengumi this whole time. Um, scared, Hichikata gets on the radio and he's like, oh, we, we saved Kondo, don't kill And he's trying to act cool and all. And he barely makes it through and he ends up giving like a Sailor Moon speech. He's like under the light of the moon or something. We'll, we will we'll punish you. Them. Yeah. Um, he, he makes three. I think the first one is to Battlestar Yamato, and then it's Gundam, and then it's finally Sailor Moon at the end. Uh, and then he kind of gives this speech about like, it, no matter what happens, even if you see everyone die, you have to live because these people are fighting for you. And then he takes over and uh, defeats the Curse of the Sword. Um Ito catches up, and Hijikata tries to draw the sword out of the sheath for a while. Um, Gintoki's making fun of him, wondering if he lost to the uh, curse of the sword or not. And to answer the question, um, Hijikata draws the sword out of the sheath, and then says that the vice captain, Hijikata Toshiro, has returned. Yeah, and that's where it ends for now. <laughs> Until the next episode. <clears throat> this episode... Another fan man. This is where I around the time where I was like, I wasn't even taking notes. I was just fucking sitting back and enjoying <laughs> watching it. Obviously, the the Okita stuff where he's just like, in, especially because they do such a good job with like the lighting here. He looks borderline like you know how when light has like the evil eye in Death Note. Mm -hmm. He kind of has that look of it. If he was not, if the condo did not exist, he would be the greatest villain of Ginsama. Because <laughs> he's just fucking ridiculous. Like the way he teaches them, like, all right, let me give you one final lesson. And he basically tells them, like, there is your final lesson is fucking die. And he massacres. Yeah, your final lesson is there's nothing you can do. Yeah, he just massacres all of them. But also, like, the beginning part where he's, like, protecting Kondo and he's, like, letting it go and basically telling him, like, your specific life is one that's worth dying for so i'm gonna go fight and that's the end of it here so you need to be safe and he unhitches the car and <clears throat> yeah they really show how much that the shinsengumi just in general love kondo because kondo is trying to and it's it's mm, what's the right way of saying this it's made very clear that kondo isn't like 
because you would think that the immediate reaction to being uh, to seeing the Shinsengumi fight the Shinsengumi and there are traitors of them would be like, oh, we need to take care of these traitors immediately. We need to get rid of them. But that's not how Kondo reacts. Kondo doesn't see that. Kondo sees that friends are fighting friends and that they're killing each other. And all he can do is like feel, and he can sell. He can tell that he can't really do anything about it because the reason that they're fighting is specifically to kill him. So he comes into this like crisis of like he really genuinely feels like the entirety of the Shinsengumi is one giant family of friends, and that's the way that he always wants it to be. So that the the fact that they are killing each other and that he feels like the only way that to get them to stop is if he legitimately died is very sad because he's like. Usually in this kind of situation, you would expect him to be like, no, we need to take down these traitors and take back the Shinsengumi. But he doesn't see it that way. He sees it as, this is a tragedy. This should never have happened. This would never have happened if I was actually a strong leader that could see this and could have prevented this, but I just wasn't. And I thought that was actually um, very well told here. Because Kondo doesn't really get to have very many fights for this. His main role here is to just come up with the idea just like deal with the fact that a lot of this is happening because he wasn't the leader that he needed to be for them and he in general will never be that kind of leader because he's too trusting and he's too loving and the other shinsengumi know that but they also are willing to die for him for that specific reason because there's someone out there who is genuinely this good is worth protecting <laughs> so i really like that aspect about the shinsengumi and how much that they are all built around that their leader is not the best in the world, but he is one of the nicest people that you could expect. And no matter what kind of person you are, like you could be a complete bloodthirsty maniac like Okita and he will still find good in you. That's someone that's worth protecting and kind of fighting over, which is something that Ito doesn't see at this moment, um, which is something he will eventually see. But he doesn't see for this moment because he's blinded by what he wants, which is just pure power at the moment. And yeah, uh, that's part of it. And then all the part with <laughs> with the this episode has that. And then in the middle of this breakdown of Kondo, you also have Gintoki fucking shooting a rocket at him. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and then his bit is like, oh, I guess he's not there. And then he's going, he immediately yells back like, what are you doing? You're going to get me killed. They're trying to stop my assassinating assassination. And you're doing the best. You've had the best shot so far. That was really good. Uh, I like the speech that Hijikata gives, where he's doing basically, again, more anime references, but he's starting the fight back against the sword. I also like Intoki's uh, s- snide remark when he says, thank you, and he's like, oh, I guess the other side is winning, because <laughs> we're getting faint. <laughs> so mm-hmm. let me. So I ask you, who are you? Are you uh, Toshiro? He's like, no, I'm the Shinsengumi Vice Chief Tosh- Hijikata Toshiro. I was like, oh, that's fucking awesome. And this is fucking great. <laughs> and yeah, in general, this episode was great. Loved it. Which is really funny because thinking back to it, it's a lot of just setup, but all the setup is really good. And the brief bits of fighting is also really good. So it's just kind of like a, like I said, not I didn't put down a lot of notes because at this point I was just kind of into it. And just kind of enjoying it. But that's my immediate thought. Yeah, the last three, I was kind of like that with all of them. Where I was like, I, I'm not like, I'm not parsing this anymore. I'm just like in it. Yeah, I'm just I'm like, here. yeah, I'm just in it. So a lot of these are my specific thoughts about what I feel looking at it. But yeah, there you go. How, that's how I feel. How do you feel, Zan? Uh, I am the same way. I thought it was really, really good. I thought it was cool as all hell. Um, I really enjoyed pretty much everything. There, there was nothing in it that I didn't like. Uh, Toshiro's return was cool as shit. Uh, all of our, all of our dudes look really cool in the Shinsengumi uniforms. Yeah, they do. They look awesome. Um, I, I was, I was there for all of it. To be honest, I thought the shit was so fucking good. Um, yeah. Everything about this remainder of this arc from this episode onward was like pinnacle, just un- unstoppable. Yeah, perfection. it. Yeah, basically, <laughs> you just sit back, relax. Okita and massacring those dudes was awesome. Kondo recognizing his failures as a leader, and you know, realizing that, or I guess feeling that he doesn't deserve Toshiro's assistance, and then you know, Toshiro appears anyway, kind of blows him away. It's just all so good. It's all so fucking good, dude. Yeah. 
It is. So much so that until you mentioned it, I didn't even re- realize that they had done a Yamcha and Vegeta reference. Yes. They was, do a, a Yamcha and Vegeta joke. Yeah. In the was, middle of all the fighting. Yeah, in the middle of all that. That's the one. And you know me, big Dragon Ball fan. Just didn't see. I was just so enamored with everything that was going on. It didn't even really hit me even when they said it. So yeah, this. Yeah. The, fuck. Man, this arc so good. It's so fucking good, dude. Slaps all the way through. It does. Now let's go on to the next episode so we continue praising it onward. Episode 104, Important Things Are Hard to See. Go ahead, Zen. Episode 104, uh, Hijikata and Ito begin their little clash. They kind of have, like, they pass each other and take a couple swings. Um, Ito takes an injury and Hijikata doesn't in their little exchange. Um, but one of the car's wheels blows, and the car, like, uh, is about to get hit by the train behind it. So Hijikata jumps out and catches the train with his feet to stop it from crushing the car. Um, Okita walks out, and he's tired and injured from killing all those dudes. Um, he tells Kondo to come over into the train because it's safe in there. Um... Gintoki tells Kondo, like, hey, we can't uh, we can't honor your last will like you tried to get us to do because we're still honoring Toshiro's right now. Um, Banzai has a cool line where he's like, oh, both both his and your souls have changed. Um, they're you know they're they're they sound different now and they're like a steady rock and death metal, metal or something yeah. it was cool yeah hijikata's um, was an anime song that turned into a rock and roll beat and his was a classical tone that turned into a <laughs> like a metal song mm-hmm. fucking cool yes um, yes it is <laughs> yes, <laughs> Very it's cool. really cool um <laughs> okita asks hijikata to stop ito and then says like if you ever fuck up like that again i'll kill you myself and take your job um Gintoki tells all of them to go, he tells like Hijikata, or not Hijikata, uh, Okita and Kondo to go on ahead and get safe. And then he's attacked by Banzai and they both end up rolling down the hill. Um, Kagura and Shinpachi stay with Okita and them before the car is eventually crushed. Ito and Hijikata are in, like on opposite sides of the destroyed car, and Ito's kind of giving the speech and all about like, oh, you were the only one who ever understood me, and that you know it's a shame that we weren't friends and we had to be enemies, but uh, it's time to finish this. And yeah, yeah. And while he's talking, Hijikata slashes through the car uh, to start their fight. We see Banzai and Gintoki fighting for a little bit. Uh, the motorcycle on explodes, which uh, injures Gintoki a little. Um, Banzai kind of waxes poetic about like why are you helping the government you know you were an anti-foreigner back in the war Um, and that's when they reveal that they were never going to actually help Ito because they don't trust him so they were going to just use him to destabilize the Shinsengumi and then leave him to die they blow up the bridge under the train cars which was actually their plan the whole time um Ito kind of has a flashback where he's talking to Takasugi and he's like doing that shit that he does where he's like, oh, you know, I'm so smart. I'm so great. Uh, I really wish someone understood me, but no one can. Um, and Takasugi kind of looks through him and he's like, you're, you're just kind of a pompous asshole. Uh, the fact of the matter is it doesn't matter what you, what you think about yourself. You're just lonely. Like you're just a lonely fucking dweeb sitting here by yourself. Uh, but they do eventually somehow decide to work together, even after Takasugi says that. Um, Ito wakes up from the memory, and he realizes that the train car is destroyed, so that must mean that he defeated Hijikata. Uh, and then he realizes that he's missing his arm, and he screams in panic. And they're going to start to try to shoot the train car, and they no, go to he kill sees him. The, he sees the arm, and he assumes that that's Hijikata's arm. Oh, the, that it's Hijikata's arm, yeah, yeah and then he realizes that, that it's his. Yes, <laughs> that's when he makes the yeah. start. Oh, fuck, that's my arm? Uh, and he's like, the only reason he's not falling from the train car is because his uniform is snagged. Uh, uh, one of the Kiheitai people are trying to shoot him, and it hits the snag of his uniform, and it causes him to fall. 
uh, he basically sees his life flash before his eyes, and he has like this shitty childhood where uh, no matter how hard he tries, all it does is make everyone around him dislike him. Like, you know, his mother hates him because the older son is, like, his older brother is sickly and dying. Um, and she blames him for that. And so he leaves and he starts to become, you know, really good at school. And then all the kids don't like him because they think he's a nerd and he's like a suck up or whatever. So they beat him up there too. So then he goes to learn how to fight and he becomes this incredible fighter. And then all the other students in the school don't like him for being so much better than them. So he kind of gets cynical, and he's just like, I guess I'm just better than everyone, and the only reason everyone doesn't like me is because they just don't get it, because I'm just that much more superior to them and all that stuff. Um, and then he kind of realizes that, yeah, he was lonely, and Takasugi was right, but he ended up blaming everyone else instead of, like, trying to, to connect with people. Uh, and he kind of has this last-minute thing where he's like I, I just wanted someone to take my hand and then he just kind of grabs him by the hand to stop That's him Kondo. From, no it's Kondo yeah. Kondo grabs him by the hand to stop him from falling um, and it's the, like a chain of people and it's Kondo holding on to him and then Okita holding on to Kondo and then I think it's Shimpachi holding Okita and Kagura is holding Shimpachi yeah. to keep them all from falling um, Kondo gives him a bit of a speech where he was like you know I'm not a soldier I'm just a dude I'm just a guy who has this job, and I'm not good at it, and I shouldn't have it, but I do have it, and so I need to do the best with what I have. Like, I can't sit here and watch my men die, and I can't I can't make a suicide squad to go in and, and die for, like, a strategic advantage. Like, I just can't do that. Uh, but I, I'm still a leader, and I still have to do right by these people. Uh, and I wanted you to be someone that I could be friends with. Like, I didn't just want you as a, a co-worker. I wanted to be your friend. Um, they pull him up right as a helicopter pulls up to start shooting them, but Hijikata leaps off the top of the train, and in a move that is completely impossible, uh, <laughs> not just because, of, uh, like, obviously a sword can't cut through a helicopter, but the fact that he, he hacks off the blades of the helicopter, but he does so horizontally while going through the top of the helicopter blades? Yeah, it's, it's an so, insane maneuver. <laughs> Never. Yeah, he, he definitely should have died. Uh, but he hacks the, the blades of the helicopter off and causes it to crash. No, no, whatever. He, he did leaves. my Lion King maneuver. He threaded the needle, Zed. <laughs> he threaded the needle perfectly. <laughs> threaded it perfectly. Uh, he, he jumps away, and Ito reaches his hand out to catch Hijikata before he falls, and they kind of all pull themselves back up in the train. Um, they declare that they, they're going to kill the other one one day, and so no matter what, neither one of them can die here. Um, we cut back to Banzai and Gintoki, who are fighting. And Bonsai's like, I, I can't keep up with you. Like, you're, you're unpredictable. I can't follow, you know, I can't listen to your soul or whatever to, to learn what you're doing. Um, so Gintoki's got him on the ropes. And then Bonsai jumps away and catches him with a bunch of steel wires. And because all he's really trying to do is stop Gintoki from catching up and helping them. Um, Gintoki gives him this speech about, like, you know, you tell me not to pull against these strings because I'll cut my arms off, but I'm getting pulled in the other direction too because it doesn't like I have to go and help everyone. Um, he ends up starting to rip through the strings and basically tells them, like, it's impressive that your strings can cut skin, but I'd love to see them cut all these rotten bonds I'm connected to. Um, he breaks all, of them, breaks all of them and starts running. Uh, Bonsai chases him, and another helicopter pulls up to start shooting at... Kagura and gang inside of the car. Uh, all of our boys. It opens fire on them. And uh, Gintoki nearly gets there to help, but he's stopped for a moment by Banzai. The helicopter stops shooting into the car because it started attacking them, and Hijikata and Kondo are on the ground. And they see that Ito had jumped in the way uh, and took all the bullets that would have hit them to protect them. And then suddenly the helicopter is knocked back, and we pan over to see that even though Banzai had jumped to attack Gintoki from behind, Gintoki has his sword like in Banzai's stomach, and he's using him to ram into the windshield of the helicopter in what might be the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it was really fucking cool. And that's where the episode ends. Yes, it ends right there. Yeah, so with the final episode being the next one. But this episode, my god. This 
Man, where the fuck do I even begin with this one? Yeah, I liked everything. I liked the guy's backstory, Ito. Because Ito is coming from a place where it's like... He's doing all the things that he's doing specifically so that someone would care. And no matter what he does, it just doesn't work out. Um, when he's smarter than everyone, he gets bullied. But when he becomes the, one of the better swordsmen, the others don't like him because he, he had to beat them to be the stronger one. So now they're also afraid of him because he's also much stronger than them as well. Uh, the mother who is... I think they try and say it that the mother is under a lot of stress from having to deal with this sickly child. But either way, regardless, she still feels that she still blames him for something that is completely out of his um, control. Like he didn't like (laughs) he didn't. I think the line she says is like he took all the good in the womb, (laughs) which is a fucked up thing to say. Yeah, he's like he, he took everything from his older brother in the womb. And that's why he's all sickly and and dying. Yeah, and it's like, that is, like, next... That is borderline, like, uh... Yeah, self- even one of the characters in the room, I think, says, like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, she tells it's like, you need to go to bed. Like, what if he hears you? This is... Like, they're actively telling her you're wrong, and there's something going on. So I think that what happened is that she was probably extremely just, like, out of it, and she said something that she shouldn't have said that was said under extreme circumstances. But regardless, he heard it, and that was enough to kind of send him down the path that he went down. And it shows that um, later on that he realizes only near the end. I think he mentions it in the next one, but he realizes it a little too late that what he wanted he already had, which is what which was living in the Shinsengumi and being with Kondo and being with everyone else. Because he had finally found a place where people just don't care about what kind of person you are. Because like Kondo said, he's not a soldier. He's looking. He's just someone who's looking to be friends with everyone that's in the Shinsengumi. And that's the way he sees them, which is why he's so devastated when uh, he sees them fighting and sees them dying. Because to him, they are all friends. They're not his soldiers. They're not, like, a giant imperial dudes who are out to protect all of Japan. They're just his friends, and his friends are dying around him. So he still sees Ita as a friend and even goes out of his way to save him. And show him and say, like, listen, this would never have happened if I was actually a legitimate leader. Which he also says, Ito also says to Hijikata, which when they're fighting, he's like, if you had been the leader, I don't think I would have done this. But because you aren't, I'm going to be doing this. So Kondo 100% takes responsibility for not being a good enough leader. And he realizes that this is his own inaction of being the kind of leader that would prevent this was is what start, starts all this. But regardless... It's really nice to see, and I also liked the bit where Hijikata goes to, after he <laughs> impossibly destroys that plane, <laughs> he goes to save him, and he's the one that uh, reaches his arm out and saves him. And in general, I also like that bit where he does see someone's arm, and he goes, like, that's clearly Hijikata's arm, only to realize it's his arm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's just bleeding out of it, and it's real fucked up, but yeah, um... I like it when we see Takatsuji because he really, like, every single time that we see more of him, it's really good. I think whenever we, I don't think there's been a moment in the anime where we haven't seen him and it hasn't been, like, a really good moment. Yeah, Takatsuji is, like, one of my favorite characters. He's Everything he does is cool. Yeah. Everything he's involved in is always, like, a peak arc whenever he appears. Yes, and he immediately, like, is he's one of the very few that immediately stops Gintoki from being the silly man that he usually is and it's a it's a great power that he has here i like uh, the use of him here to kind of like show that he never really saw ito as anything as a means to destroy the shins and gumi from within um but yeah the reveal that he was just lonely and that um he was just a lonely little guy also like the in Tokyo when he talks about the bond stuff because it actually comes up in the next episode when he talks about bonds that can't be broken or that are stronger than the steel wires that they have because it comes up in the next episode and in general that entire fight with him was really awesome <laughs> when he's like powering through all the steel wires and he's bleeding all over the place and he just like doesn't give a shit <laughs> he still continues to move forward i think he gives a line like do you think that <laughs> i wish i could st- don't you think I wish I could stop myself from saving these garbage people, but something in my body refuses to let me, and I have to go and do it. 
which is really nice. Um, and like, yeah, like you said, when he grab, when he get, the, even though he's being attacked from behind, he drives him into that play. <laughs> Yeah, that that was maybe one of the coolest things in. It, it's honestly not just in Gintama. It's one of the coolest things I've seen in like an anime, because you know Banzai is jumping up from behind him and he's like falling down on his back, um, and the last thing we see is he like quickly turns around like you do in an anime when they're like oh, like they're about to get hit, mm-hmm. and the next time we see them is that he has complete control of the fight and he's like shoving him into a helicopter through the windshield of the helicopter. Yeah. And also, it's so fucking cool. Yeah, it is. I also like that he calls him like someone who's not able to let go. He calls him basically a living ghost because of what he was when he fought in the ant for against in the anti foreigner legion, and we got to see him like on the battlefield, and we see him before he who he is now, and that was real cool. Again, anytime they show any bits of his, I can't wait till we get to the part where we learn more about his past. Yeah, but see, I like that part too, though, because um, he's giving him this big lecture, and he's like, you know, uh, there's not, you know, you fought for the country, and the country's gone, and you fought for the samurai, and they're gone, and everything that you, uh, everything that you have been fighting for, like, is gone. That's why you're just you're just a ghost clinging to the past, and he ends up being completely wrong. Mm-hmm. That, that, that I love that about Kentucky. That's a fucking good character. Yes, he's very good. But yeah, in the start of this as well, when he mentions, like, like he, this has also been a good bit for him, because I just feel like we didn't get enough of him in the previous times that he's shown up. He was definitely someone that was more in the background of a lot of the fights. Like, we've seen him around, but this is a good introduction of kind of seeing how he fights. I think he fights specifically through seeing the actual energy of, or the soul of the person that he is fighting against, because you can see it for Gintoki. So I think he's blind, isn't he? Bonsai? Yeah, uh, that was my my interpretation as of right now. You don't have to correct me if I'm. If I well. don't think so. I thought it was. I thought his whole thing was that it was like music to him. Ah, uh, that would make a little bit more sense. But we see him briefly fight again, and when he mentions that that the, his specific spirit uh, was very unruly and hard to fight against because he just couldn't actually see it, and he didn't have like any actual beat to it that he could follow. But also, like again, that also that beginning part where he's checking out their souls, and he says the the change from an anime song to a rock and roll song and a classical song to a metal song, just to let you know that both these dudes fighting against each other are just like so ready to kill each other. That, yeah, they're ready to go in. That the that the heavy metal music and the rock music just starts blasting. And yeah, um. Really, really fucking good episode. Like I said previously, I was just kind of enjoying the ride here. So, Zen, why don't you go ahead and tell me what you liked about this episode? Uh, shit was really good the whole way through. Uh, Gintoki was way too cool in this episode. Um, all the interactions were good. The look into Ito's backstory was really good. Uh, and him and Kondo kind of having that moment where Ito realizes that, like, I had convinced myself that I was better than everyone else to cope with how shitty I felt like my life was, but actually all I wanted was like people who cared about me, and I had that the whole time, and I threw it away with all of my cope. Um, shit was good. It was real good. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. If you haven't p- picked it up and you're still watching this like us in 104 episodes in, more now than ever, you should just really watch Kintama. <laughs> And you you also get the benefit of not having to do five episodes a week, because I feel like if we could watch more episodes, we would already be finished with Gintama at this point. Yeah, I'd be watching way more if I didn't have to talk about it. If I, if I went too far ahead of the show, I'd forget the one that we were going to talk about. Yeah, and I feel the same way. And there's, no, there's not enough hours in the day for us to do more episodes than we do already. No, but we, there sure isn't. No, but uh, you should definitely be watching Gintama. It's a fucking hell of a anime, and I assume manga as well. I can only assume both are fantastic. Now let's end this arc, Zen. The crisis is over, because we're talking about episode 105. It's all about the beat and the timing. So, Kintoki uh, sends Bonsai through the helicopter, Um he pulls another sword out and stabs through Kentucky's shoulder, and he calls him, you know, a ghost trying to protect the country and the, you know, samurai way and everything, and he knocks him off the helicopter. Um, 
only to realize that Gintoki had unraveled some of the strings of his whatever his thing is, Shamison. Yeah, I think. Um, that's... And he has got it all round around the helicopter so that he survives the fall by using it to like break his fall. Uh, he wraps all of the rest of the string around his wooden sword, and he says that he actually never cared about protecting the country or the samurai away or anything. And what he's protecting right now is the same thing he was protecting back then, which obviously means his friends and his loved ones. Uh, he ends up yanking the helicopter out of the sky with the string there. Um, Ito tells Hijikata to go take command and win the battle uh, and, and leave him because they're all kind of around him, hoping that he doesn't die because he's all shot up. Um Shinpachi asks why you ended up like why Ito did you save them if you were a traitor the whole time and then Ito's like well what about you guys uh, you're not friends with them either um, and then Ito kind of has this moment with Shinpachi's answer where he's like I really fucked up <laughs> I, I had everything I wanted and I threw it away because I was being an asshole um, he realizes he has pretty much no chance to survive um and they're like, oh, we need, we need to... Kondo tells him to take Ito and arrest him. And Shinpachi tries to confront Kondo, only for Kondo to be, like, crying about it. Uh, Okita, Hijikata, and Kondo map up the rest of the attacking Ronin. And Hijikata kind of gives another little, like, oh, I killed the enemy leader. They're, they're all... You know, there's nothing left. Take them out. And they have this cool little scene where they all are kind of kicking the ass of all the people who are attacking them. And then the officers take the arrested Ito and put him into a ring. Basically all of the Shinsengumi circle him. And then Hichikata walks into the ring as well. Gives him a sword and says, you know, why don't we finish this fight? And that's when uh, I think it's Gintoki who kind of tells Shinpachi that, you know, he's going to die no matter what. Um He's too hurt to save. There's no way that he's going to survive this. So they want him to die like as a warrior and one of them, as opposed to just dying you know, in that train car as the traitor who caused all of these problems. Um, Hijikata and Ito attack one another one more time. Hijikata slashes him open, and then Ito sees this little uh, like golden line between Hijikata and himself, which symbolizes one of those bonds that he's been chasing. And then one extends from all of the other Shinsengumi to him as well uh, before he eventually passes away from all of his wounds. We see Banzai talking to Takasugi. And he's like, oh, you know, maybe if you had done better, you know, Ito's plan would have worked. And Banzai was like, no, uh, the rebellion was not for that. It was just so that, you know, we could have our guys make some deals with the government um, and then Banzai kind of admits that, like, I'm I'm kind of enamored with the way that Gintoki lives his life, and I want to I want him to answer, you know, the question that he left me with. And he leaves. I don't know if that means that he's quitting Takasugi's gang entirely. It kind of seemed like he was, um, but I don't know for sure. I suppose. Yeah, there was no specific firing, but it does feel like more like. Yeah, Takasugi just kind of closes his eyes and starts playing the instrument. There was no official like I'm out of here. But he also um, leaves the room. It, it certainly felt like he was quitting. Um, and then we see that they are at a funeral for Yamazaki. Um, and then Yamazaki is actually still alive. And he doesn't realize that he was in the hospital for so long that he didn't have a chance to tell him he didn't die. Uh, Banzai ends up choosing not to kill him and letting him leave. Uh, and he's like, oh no, everyone's gonna... Um, be so mad if I tell them they're alive now. Look how sad they are about me. And then it turns out that the funeral is actually for Matsudaira's dog. <laughs> and they're like, I just throw Yamazaki up there too, I guess. With um, uh, yeah, some yeah, and he's like all upset about it. And then he decides he's going to scare them. So he dresses himself as a ghost and like paints blood on his face. And he's got his badminton racket. Um, and then as soon as he goes to enact his plan, he explodes. Uh, and it's Hijikata who had returned uh, after revealing to our gang that he can't get rid of the cursed sword no matter what, so I guess he's got to keep it with him from now on. And Gintoki kind of spins it positively, and he's like, you know, 
there's worse curses to have than a sword that's always by your side to protect the things that you care about. Um, Hishikata tells him that one of the rules of the Shinsengumi is not to die and come back to life <laughs> to uh, Yamazaki. And so he says that everyone there has to kill themselves because they were breaking the rules, like having cell phones during meetings and reading, reading jump, jump and coming back to life. But uh, they're all so happy that he's back that they kind of rush over and mob him. And Kondo gives a little speech that he's like, you know, you called me the soul of the, the Shinsengumi, but really you are just as much as I am. Um, and then Hijikata's phone goes off, and it's another anime like song ringtone, and he answers it again. <laughs> and he answers in the... the yeah, in the yeah. nerdy voice. Yeah, which is really good to say that, oh yeah, he still has to deal with some parts of the curse, <laughs> no matter what. Ah... Uh. And this is the end of the Shinsengumi Crisis Arc. Uh, well, to give my specific feelings on this end episode, what a fucking great way to end it. Oh my god, I'm a big fan. As you know, as a big fan of Dragon Ball, I'm a big fan of friendship. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Uh, love the bonds that people have. And that end bit with the Shinsengumi where all of them are like connected and they're all going to him and they show him even at the end of the even at his death that they were all connected in some way and that he was in some ways seen as a friend and loved it was very touching it was a very nice way for him to go out um he realized too late that he always had what he always wanted and that he allowed his like he he allowed he cut off so much of what he wanted that it ended up being that he was blinded to what he wanted all along that he didn't realize that at some point he had actually achieved what he wanted um and he didn't see it as enough and it wasn't until the end that everything kind of came together and he saw it and he was happy to be there at the end because he he laments that at the end like what he wants what he really wants is that he wants to pick up his sword and go fight with the Shinsengumi and die with them, but his arm is gone. He can't actually fight. Like, there's no energy in him. He has nothing uh, left to give. And so the Shinsengumi give him basically a way to die out like a samurai and not die out like a traitor. And Kondo, like I said, who has been realizing that he cares a lot about his guys, he realizes that he's, no matter what, there is no saving him. Which is why he's crying and says, just let us handle it, because this is the way it has to be done, and there's no real other way of getting out of this. Uh, all great stuff. It's really funny, it's really funny that when the Shinsengumi debuted, both me and you weren't really feeling them, and now we've made almost a complete 180 turn. <laughs> yeah, well, when they first showed up, they were almost just kind of like annoying, let's get in Toki's way and be obnoxious kind of characters. Kind of goofballs, uh, yes. Yeah. And now they're like the oh they're so good they're yeah. so good now they're they're the same goofballs but I actually like them now <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> really cool really well done um, the stuff with Bonsai was also very good when in general he he I guess is it's actually going to be interesting as we see obviously some people who have seen the series know but don't feel free to tell us I just kind of want to figure it out as we go along is the idea of, like, did he actually leave? Because it does feel like at the end with him sparing Yamazaki that maybe he's not the worst kind of guy and he's just someone who is following a very specific beat. But we'll see when... We'll see if he actually is still with the group or something like that. But it definitely did feel like with him sparing him, it feels like he's kind of, like, I guess more interested in people who are strange which is the only reason i would assume that he would spare yamazaki is that he could see that for whatever reason the specific rhythm of his uh soul was one that was very interesting and very much worth keeping alive so he's like oh, you know what i'll keep you alive you're interesting <laughs> go ahead batman and boy i'll let you live which is uh, an interesting kind of character plot and uh, character thing to have, and I want to see more where this kind of goes on in the next hundred episode when the when these dudes show up again <laughs> for the next big moment. <laughs> yeah, whenever they inevitably appear later yeah, on well, randomly, I'll, I'll be listening for the song. If I hear that song, I know they're coming back. And <laughs> I know now. Um, and yeah, in general, th this episode and this arc has been fucking great and it was a hell of a time watching it 
and it was yeah no other words Zen tell me how you feel uh, 10 out of 10 fantastic ending to the arc uh, perfect conclusion everyone had a great moment there uh, I loved the giving Ito a chance to die with a sword in his hand um, I like Ito's sad backstory I don't know why I expected a character that I had never seen before to survive a Gintama mini arc because I thought when him <laughs> and uh, Hijikata were like, no matter what, you know, we can't die here. We are not going to die here until we finish each other off. I thought we were like, oh, okay. They're, they're going to keep him around to be like a Hijikata, you know, episode kind of guy. Nope. Dies almost immediately after they make that promise. <laughs> uh, again, I don't know why I expected a secondary character introduced in the a Gintama mini arc to actually survive because uh, um, that just, never happened <laughs> you're just hoping at this point uh, yeah one of these days it's gonna have to happen I swear um, to god can't keep losing these goddamn side characters and it was also it has nothing to do with this actual episode but it was really funny to me that uh the preview for the next episode is just like a dumbass soccer episode it's just like <laughs> oh we're playing soccer next time. Do, like, after do, this horribly do, do, sad thing. It's a good thing that um, <laughs> this was a perfect five episodes. <laughs> so yes. Uh, and I also really like the... Oh, well, they flipped the ending and the opening songs. So the ending song was played as the opening for this episode with clips of Ito. And then the opening was played as the ending with clips from the mini arc itself. I thought that was really good. Yeah. It also also fit in a way because the ending uh, was used to show the characters as kids and so they actually show him as kids and then the actual main part is them as adults so i thought it was very well done i was like oh shit they got me again you think <laughs> you think i'd see these parallels coming sooner but they get me every single time <laughs> every time got me again kintama <laughs> got me again <laughs> god damn it got me again so yeah God, man. Sirius is so fucking good. <laughs> it is so good, dude. It's always so good. It it's is. frustratingly good. It is. It, it really is. I, I remember because someone told me that oh, when I was saying, oh, yeah, the next arc is the Shinsengumi Crisis arc. And they're saying, oh, that's that's the, ne- that's the next big one. That's like, if you liked Benny Zakura, then you're going to love this one as well. And I was like, oh, that's a very big uh, ask here, but I'm kind of hyped. Yeah, that's and... a big promise you're making right there. Yeah, I was like, that's a big, that's yeah, sure. definitely, 100%. And I'm starting to believe what the people have told us. is like, oh, yeah, Benny Zakura was just a start. It's only going to get better from this point on. And fuck, man, I can't wait to get there. <laughs> I know, I need it. It's so good. Yes, 100%. And yeah, that is it for Gintama this week. Next week, we're going to be talking about soccer. Let's go in episode 106. Yeah, uh, soccer episode. Let's go. Captain Subasa. Absolutely love it. Oh, spoofs of Captain Subasa. Let's go. As everyone knows, I'm the number one Captain Subasa. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> number one Captain Subasa. Uh,. SNES player. I was trying to remember the full name of the game, but I could not at the moment. But yeah, we have episode 106 and episodes 107 and 108, which is another little tiny mini arc. And then episodes 109 and episodes 110. And yeah, that's what we got next. I'm looking forward to it. Man. You so we expect these next five episodes to all be jokey, jokey, joke episodes. Terrible. Yeah, jokey, jokey, <laughs> silly crap. Yeah, all, all of them, as is tradition. <laughs> We'll see. Maybe if we give them a week break, they'll it will let us <laughs> remember the 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 hype that was this one. It's unfortunate because I always feel like the next episode is always the one that takes the most brunt of it. Of like, it has to like readjust us back to and now back to Gintama and now to the back ball to jokes silly bullshit time. Yeah, yeah. Now we return to the shit jokes that you have been <laughs> accustomed to. <laughs> Yeah, you've had you've had too much good good shit. It's time to go back to the poop jokes. Yeah, and it's like, well, give me this poop joke so I can get used to it, and then I can enjoy the other poop jokes that come afterwards. <laughs> That's how it always goes. So look forward to that. And we are looking forward to talking about Morgan Tama next week. But that's it for this week, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you can go to Zen's channel. 
Uh, and I don't think I've said here, but do you, uh, I don't think I've told the people yet this yet. You obviously know, but I'm apparently one of the top Zenrado uh, accounts. When you look into YouTube and say like, "What account would you like to add to the end of this video?" and I said Zenrado, yours is obviously number one, but I'm somewhere like in the f in the sixth place, <laughs> which is pretty impressive for a guy whose name is not Zenrado. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very proud of that. But if you want some more Zen Focus videos, then you can always go to him, and he does Shonen and Chill with the Ocean Man, of course. And if you want more me, you're already here, baby. Just keep watching more Wokey videos, and you can also check out the streams as well, which we do every Monday now, where Zen punishes his good friend by making him play very shitty Genesis games. Though he promises me, he promises me that Vector Man is good. Okay. Uh it's not good. God well, damn it, it Evan. Can I not? It's, <laughs> it's not as bad as the shit you've just done. It's it's better than anything you've played so far. Okay. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. After the five hours of playing Lion King, I will take it's this one. It's basically just a Mega Man knockoff. Oh, I love so, Mega Man. So, so yeah, works. depending on how much you like it will depend on how much you like Mega Man. I really like it's, Mega it's Man. It's just a complete Mega Man knockoff. Okay, sweet. Say no more. So, yeah, check out that. And as always, you can if you want to show support for the show, then you can just keep on watching and keep on leaving likes and make feel free to make a comment. That will be a good way to support the show. You don't have to worry too much because for the most part, Fago supports my channel. So this is a fun side endeavor that me and Zen can easily do. <laughs> if anything, you should go support my Fago videos because those are what allow me to, <laughs> to make hour long videos. <laughs> I have to get back to it pretty soon. Um, I've been very busy with work, so I haven't been able to do as much Fago videos to help make up for lack of them. But don't worry, they'll be back. <laughs> they'll be back to support the main <laughs> ones pretty soon. <laughs> and that is it for Sean Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, we will see you in the next video we need a better outro a little bit we really do need we have a good intro we don't have an outro for this no <laughs> unfortunately we need to work on it don't worry someday <laughs> it's uh, it's the hardest thing in the world because usually our outros are just like bullshitting until we're done and i say okay everyone goodbye <laughs> yeah we just say okay see ya <laughs> yeah we just like talk shit for however long until we finish speaking yeah and uh but like we're doing right now actually <laughs> yeah actually so this would be the perfect time to say goodbye everyone <laughs> say goodbye, <laughs> goodbye everybody. see ya peace out <laughs>